So thank you to the organizers for uh, allowing me to come and, uh, and give this nice presentation. Uh, so I'm going to be discussing this modular invariant uh, neutrino masses. This is an expansion of the previous ideas we've heard. Uh, and this is based on work that I've done with uh, Ferruccio Ferruglio in Padova and this other PhD student, uh, Juan Carlos. Okay, so what is the status of neutrino physics? So you hold a, heard a whole talk about this, uh, but this is my one slide version. So in the standard model, neutrinos are massless, but we see from oscillation experiments that they have a, uh, a small but non-zero mass, uh, and this is many orders of magnitude less than the lepton and the quark sector. Uh, another difference is that the mixing angles in the PMNS matrix are uh, significantly larger. So the CKM is approximately uh, diagonal, but we have these large, uh, large off-diagonal elements. So what we've actually measured is two mass squared differences, but not the overall mass scale, the mass of the lightest neutrino. Uh, we have also measured the three uh, mixing angles, but not uh, directly the, the, the CP violating phase, although there are some early hints. So the most open questions for the uh, experimentalists are, is the mass ordering uh, normal or inverted? Uh, what is the mass of this lightest neutrino? And also about this neutrinoless double beta decay. So, uh, are neutrinos Dirac or Majorana, and, uh, and what is the value of this? So this is a, a missing entry. Okay, so this is a, a guide to model building in, uh, uh, for masses and mixings in the neutrino sector. So you can introduce a new symmetry. This could be a, a continuous symmetry, like a U1, and this is more typical in uh, models with quarks. And in the neutrino sector, it seems to be a bit easier with these discrete symmetries. So you can choose your discrete symmetry, A5, S4, uh, A4, for example. Uh, then you can choose a mass generation mechanism. So here you can either have a, a Weinberg uh, mass, or you can choose some kind of uh, seesaw mechanism. So here I write down a, a type 1 seesaw. Then you have to choose your field content and representations. What I mean by field content is if you want to introduce any extra flavons, and then you have to specify what the VEBs are. And then you have to choose the representations for, these, uh, for your standard model content. Uh, so you have your right-handed neutrinos, left-handed neutrinos, and also the representations for the flavons. And after you've chosen all of this, this uh, exactly gives you your mass matrices. So uh, you can have this for just the neutrino mass matrix, or you can also include dynamics in the uh, charged lepton matrix. And this gives you the holy grail of the, the PMNS matrix. Uh, and this, uh, from this you can extract all of your experimental parameters that you saw previously. Okay, so how does modular symmetry fit into this idea? This is uh, not uh, modular symmetry specific. So in, uh, this is inspired from string theory, in which you have to compactify the 10 string dimensions into the four-dimensional world uh, in which we live. And the simplest way to do this is along three tori. So these uh, tori, the shape of them is dependent on this uh, modular transformation. So this transformation, if I uh, define the length of my uh, torus to be 1, the circumference, and I define this small circumference to be tau, then your invariant, if you choose a point, uh, under these transformations. So if I go, uh, I can go 1 across, and that's like doing a loop over here, or I can go uh, along this direction in tau over here. And so you, kind of, you can build a lattice from the shape of the torus. And this, is, uh, this can be generalized by uh, this transformation over here, where a, b, c, and d are integers. So what does this mean for the low energy uh, phenomenology? So uh, I can write down the super potential. These are uh, chiral super fields. And once I define the uh, representations for my uh, neutrinos and the representations for the Yukawa couplings, then it turns out that your uh, mass matrix is solely a, a function of these uh, mathematical functions of tau. So it just means that with one complex parameter, I can completely identify my neutrino mass matrix. So what is the model uh, that I'm working on? So we've chosen uh, to work in this uh, gamma 4, this is the, the finite modular group, and this is basically like S4. And so we define a set of representations, uh, and so we obtain this particular mass matrix over here. Now before I just had one entry, but now there, it turns out that there are two contributions, and this is based on group theory having two different ways to make a, a singlet. So our input parameters to obtain the uh, uh, PMNS matrix we have this complex parameter tau. Uh, we also have this uh, psi, this uh, contribution of the second, and this is also uh, um, complex parameter, and an overall scale. 
So with just five input parameters, we can extract all of the information from the whole of the neutrino sector. So we, uh, in terms of the observables that we've measured, we get the two mass square differences, the three mixing angles, and the uh, CP violating phase. Uh, but in addition to this, we specify the overall mass scale. This is the mass of the lightest neutrino. Uh, and you can also extract the new, uh, neutrino that's double beta decay and the uh, Majorana phases over here. So it's an extremely predictive model. Uh, and I just want to make note that different to the previous model that was uh, discussed, uh, with, which Bruce did before, I've not touched the charged lepton sector whatsoever. So there are no, no flavons in the charged lepton. This is just, this explains the, the whole dynamics that's in the neutrino sector. Okay, so what are my conclusions? Um, modular symmetry provides a, a new framework for model building. This is an interesting idea. It's been extended to the quark sector. Uh, and I think in the future, people are going to be uh, really pursuing this to find a, a new direction in model building. Um, this modular S4 can work uh, in this minimal scenario, so we, we've done really very little, with, and it's a very predictive model. And we have, a, so for this model I show, this particular chi-squared is uh, extremely small. Uh, and new experimental results will probe these scenarios. So at June and Hyper-K, we're hoping to get a direct measurement of the mass ordering and the CP violating phase. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Question, quick question, somebody, okay. Thanks. How do you get the charge-level mass matrix from the model? Uh, so in this particular model, it's just taken to be a uh, diagonal, so we just write in directly. But you can also introduce dynamics, um, which will affect and, and, and modify your parameters. But for this, we don't need to, to just uh, take into the diagonal. I think we should. Well, let's take a uh, second. Okay.